So, a little play with chat GPT. Want to give some basic HTML for a page about marketing. I'm not sure if it's going to make the table as I wanted. It doesn't really need to because I already asked it to make some CSS style sheet code to put in my website that will make any table that I insert into my website in HTML be centered and occupy 80% of the page content. Anyway, here it goes. The question was, of course, for it to make a HTML, an article in HTML, about internet marketing. Write an introductory article in HTML with header and tagline in not more than 600 words. So most blog posts that are most read and high ranking are between about 600 and 800, 500 and 800 words. So about 600. And give a list of 15 methods which can be used to market one's services or products online. Put the 15 methods within a HTML table containing five cells wide and three rows high that is centered and occupies 80% of the width of the page. Yeah, So I don't really need the body. I just need this. I just need this. I don't need the body or the HTML tags because this is going into a WordPress site here called Internet Marketing. And so we go on to the text, which means code, and put it in here. i go back to visual. Uh, I'm gonna, just going to send to that and that. Put that in the middle here. And format it and uh, let's this goes in my tutorials and this will have in tutorials I have learnt one two three four so this is going to be number four number four I want it to be fourth save draft and I want to also have a plugin here and uh, I'm using some short code from a plugin that is uh, a sitemap plugin from WebVitaly who is a dev who makes plugins for WordPress so it's nothing to do with GPT-3 it's just a plugin uh, short code. I'm going to put siblings and sub pages in there. Uh, it's a very good plugin actually. He used the square brackets. So I'm putting sub pages. To the end of this video, video I end up uh, having to shuffle sub pages and siblings around and then back round again. As the sub pages will be pages that are under this page, as a mother page, this page will be a mother of. Sm sub pages siblings are pages this is also a sub page of another main mother page so it, if it shows its siblings those are the siblings the pages that are on the same level as it these red links but as you can see it's made the table in gpt for me and it's five cells wide and three rows high so um i don't need to because what i'm showing you here is that in my WordPress site, I put some extra CSS code, which I also got from GPT-3, from chat, GPT chat, sorry, and which makes uh, the table 80%, contain 80% of the content. So it's got a bit of padding either side. You can see either side here with my cursor. There's a little bit. Of content you can see the light gray area of the blog post content and here are the links where I wrote siblings these are sibling uh, pages that are on the same level of depth of the website so I have this I have a tutorials page 
And this is a, a page within the tutorials. And so are the other pages you see here, like Learn C Programming Language or Search Engine Optimization. They're all sibling pages under the Tutorials section. So you can see subpages. So when I make a subpage here, and I already have, called Email Marketing. Yeah. As you can see, Search Engine Optimization, Paper Click, Email Marketing, number six, yeah, in the second row. I already wrote a page for that. Yeah. And that page, I will have to number it as number six in WordPress so that it appears in this list of red links. It will appear where my cursor is now when I publish it because it's not published yet. The child pages of the mother page, the siblings and the sub, the sub pages, sorry. So I'm putting now the siblings on the top and the sub pages on the bottom, which is wrong. At the end of the video, I end up having to do that again. I know that because my sound stopped working when I was screencasting this and I'm now continuing the narrative after the video as I'm watching it with you. So as we're back in GPT chat, you can see it made me a full HTML, which I didn't have to copy the HTML and body. I just copied from, you see it's made the HTML table containing five cells wide and three rows high that is centered and occupies 80% of the width of the page. I didn't really need to stipulate that because the CSS in this particular website already does that with all tables. But uh, I wanted to show you that you, you could do that. And if it didn't work, you would say, "Could you write me some C rewrite the HTML file with some CSS style sheets in the head to make the table 80% contain?" Yeah, I'm, uh, now I'm pointing at these sibling pages, which are under the tutorials. As you can see, these are the sibling pages; they're the same ones, and those are sub pages. Search engine optimization has sub pages which you could also see below. As you can see, search engine optimization, then you can see an ordered list that is inset, indented, at the bottom of the page, uh, yeah, the red links. And you can see it in the, in the top menu as well. So this is nothing to do with GPT-3, it's just to show you if you're a WordPress user, uh, that the Web Vitaly's plugin for the uh, sitemap sitemap html sitemap so now I'm um, getting a default image for the blog and uh, for the post I like to have a default image uh, because if you share to Facebook or anywhere then you get a thumbnail also if you've got images in your blog post it will take but if you use some WordPress themes if you use a logo image which I do on one of my other websites, uh, my personal website at johnspencer.com. Uh, every time I share to Facebook, it takes the logo instead of the post main default blog post or page image. But uh, in in this website, it doesn't. It takes the actual image. So I'm making a default image, not images for the actual page post to insert into the page rather a default header image for the post and I'm using Adobe Photoshop Express which is a free app it's a Windows PC I'm using in this particular case but you can get it on the Mac App Store or on the Windows App Store and you can get it for Android as well and I suppose for Chromebooks probably too yeah for sure it's in the Play Store and it's a great uh, app. I used a disposable email address, a YOP mail address, Y-O-P-M-A-I-L, the YOP mail, uh, to sign up so they don't spam me, Adobe. And once you do that, you get loads more tools in this free uh, Photoshop Express app. And it's really good for just editing images. So the reason I'm naming this image now is because Google, it's good for SEO. So anyway... What did I do there? What happened? I was supposed to be making a banner image. 
open with Adobe Photoshop Express. So we're away from GPT chat in the moment a little bit, but I wanted to show you the purpose of why, you know, you what can you use GPT chat for? Well, you can use it to get this and that, it to say this and that, but then you're supposed to copy and paste it and use it in something else, right? So this is what I'm using it in this case. So I'm making that banner. Okay, that's why I couldn't see it. Okay, and uh, call this one Internet, I believe. Internet Marketing. And uh, I see in Windows you can right-click on the image and the properties and details and write a title and tags and keywords and stuff, which is also very good SEO for Google because it's metadata within the image that Google Search can actually pick up and read and does. So anyway, featured image for the internet marketing page and its child page is email marketing, which is the sixth of the 15 ways of internet marketing I gave uh, on the page, which GPT chat gave me to paste into my WordPress page. Now, um, does Google know an AI has written it? Well, in this case, I left it pretty straight. I will be re-editing it afterwards. Doesn't matter if I've already posted it and Google's been pinged. Because if I edit it and add to it, when I repost it and uh, post it again, save and publish, Google will know it's been updated and be pinged. And so long as there's some new information there and more images or some change to the text and some new text, that's fine. But uh, back to the question, can GPT-3 be used to write in different ways so it doesn't sound like an AI? Yeah, sure. And you will see that shortly, because I do it in this video. But uh, I think so. Or you could say, write it in the style of Shakespeare, or write it in the style of this marketing expert, yeah? Uh, Neil Patel is a top marketing expert, for example, internet marketing. So write it as if he wrote it, in the way he writes, or write in the way this person writes, or that person writes, so long as it's a famous person, or write enthusiastically. Here I'm writing a slog, which is a URL. And I'm putting in a default image for the child page, which I made, So, which also GPT chat helped me with. And which, after this video, I'll be working on, of course, to make them a little bit more personalized, a little bit more personalized and human, and less clinically formatted, although that's supposed to be good SEO. I think a little bit of human touch and a little bit of uh, imperfection. I mean, art is imperfection. Impressionism is an imperfect type of a photo isn't it it's not a perfect photo but it's in, it's the imperfections i mean it's uh, for example the inclusions and the flaws within a ruby are what makes a ruby real yes the less flaws and the less inclusions the more expensive the ruby but it is those idiosyncrasies yeah same as a musician or a singer certain singers have a tendency like michael jackson used to <coughs> at the end of a song. So here we go. There's the child page, email marketing tips. Yeah. Which I did with my web vitally plug in there with my sub pages and my siblings. So nothing to do with GPT chat, but for WordPress users, I think it's called sitemap, WP sitemap or something like that. And it's by a developer called web vitally. I'm putting a break in there. And that's going to be too big. And I'm going to end up putting a line of text in there between a little header to separate the siblings from the sub pages. So you can see email marketing tips. That is a sub page. So it's a child page. Then I've got that break there, which is a little bit big. I need a header in there instead of a break. Maybe a H4 header. 
And you can see this beautiful table here, which was made by GPT Chat for me. <laughs> Saved me a hell of a lot of coding. Not a hell of a lot. Well, actually, it's difficult to write a table. I don't use IDEs that fill things in for me. If I write code, I type it. As I'm, you see me typing now, letter for letter. I learned to write code in Notepad, and I still do. I still don't use IDEs. I believe you can't remember the commands and the variables and the constants and so on. Yeah, and the how to write an array and uh, you can't believe you can't remember the vocabulary, the dictionary, of term of syntax. But if you type everything yourself, you can. So here I'm putting in a, a header here. Correcting my code as well. Silbings. I think. I, yeah. Other tutorials. And that's centered, which is bad because the links are not. That's one thing I don't like about ordered lists. Is that they. If you center them. The dots or the numbers if they're numbered lists or ordered lists they still stay to the left of the page you can't center the black dots or whatever you use dots or squares or whatever you can actually use images or css they don't have to be black dots if you want to fiddle with that i don't think it makes you sell more or people read more it just makes your website look slicker but i don't like to waste too much time on that on that unless somebody hires me for graphic design so there you go email marketing tips which is number six in the table so i'll have to number that page as number six because in wordpress if they're sub pages of a mother page you see so i have a list in the table i want the pages to be listed on my tutorial menu and in my sitemap in the right order so i'm putting the number six here in now I don't know what to title this video, really don't. So there you see, you can, you don't see my internet marketing with the subpage email marketing tips as the sixth of a 15 subpage. The internet marketing page will have 15 subpages, yeah? Because I didn't add it to my menu. I have a manual top menu, the tab menu at the top. So I'll take that and it's child page, the email marketing tips and add them to the menu and then drag and drop them email marketing tips is a child page and this has to be the fourth no wrong place dude what are you doing no it's number four you counted internet marketing was the fourth child page of the tutorials mother page so put it down at the bottom there there yeah no no in the middle i'm watching myself it's like watching myself gaming afterwards. I didn't see that. Are you blind or what? I do game streaming and I watch them afterwards on YouTube. So I have to make sure. Now check the tutorials menu. Now internet marketing. There you see. And there's the, the sub page. So that now appears as a sub page. And there'll be 15 sub pages under the internet marketing tab. So thank you to GPT chat. And that's, uh, can GPT chat write code? Yeah, in this case, HTML, HTML5. Much simpler than the HTML transitional and HTML4 I had to lo uh, learn to write manually. <laughs> not that it, not that I regret it because I understand everything I see in HTML because of that. Anyway, thank you to GPT chat. Write an introductory artillery in HTML with header and tagline not more than 600 words about internet marketing give a list of 15 methods which should be used to market one's services put the 15 methods within a HTML table containing five cells wide and three rows high that is centered and occupies 80% of the width of the page which it does and if it didn't you just tell it to write CSS in the head that makes it do that because as I said, I already made the CSS in my website. So let's continue. I need some more text now for the internet marketing page. Because that really wasn't, doesn't look like 600 words or 500 words. Most best blog posts 
are found to be within five to eight hundred words. The most read, sorry, the most read ones, longer than that, people don't read it all. It's too much. Shorter than that, seems a little bit short. They don't get engaged. So uh, five to eight hundred words is it roughly a good number of words for a blog post. But uh, so I would say as a blogger, it's important sometimes to do what you call a super post or a super page, which is a very big page. Because I know Google has ranked some of my websites for having a very, very big informative page. Landing page it was as well. Um, unfortunately, it's not evaluated like that. I'm not sure how, how it evaluates that particular factor these days. Now look at that text going. That ladies and gentlemen is coming out. And as you see, I told it to write in the style of Neil Patel, yeah? About the power of internet marketing. That was a simple line. One simple line, I asked it. One simple prompt. To write in the style of Neil Patel, who is one of the world, considered the world's number one uh, internet marketing guru. I, w I wouldn't agree, but uh, because... If you Google that, that's what it'll say. But the people who say that have been paid by Neil Patel to say that because their blogs come up top of Google. So it just pays to... It's fake truth. It is truth that he's an internet marketing guru. So there you go. Got that extra text written in the style of Neil Patel who says, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not American. We don't say ladies and gentlemen. I'd rather just talk to... Like, the person who's reading because I'm not talking to a crowd I think I'll take those uh, uppercase internet marketing out as well you see that's really spammy so Neil Patel isn't that well GPT's version of Neil Patel isn't anyway as you can see GPT changed the way it writes yeah so can Google tell it's an artificial intelligence? No, not if you use stuff like Quillbot to paraphrase it and then do some manual paraphrasing, which means you can't get out of all of the work. A lot of people say, a uh, webmaster's going to go out of business now with GPT-3. No, you're going to pro proliferate. You don't need to steal images or make your own in Photoshop. I've got four here. Yeah which is, this is in uh, Stable Diffusion. I prefer to use, uh, I can't remember actually, and I need to pay now because I've used up my free trial, but it's on Discord and it's one of the best um, AI image making apps. It's sending me crazy with some of the beautiful images it makes. Um, uh, on the website I was just posting on, that's where I got most of my images from. So anyway. There you go. The nice table made with GPT. This extra text from Neil Patel. And uh, got myself a couple of pages made more for my website. And these images, those were, I believe, yes, they were made with Stable Diffusion. The header image just saw so you could proliferate now and ask gpt for example to proliferate on each of these topics yeah like uh demographic information and purchase history what you can deduce from it yeah or um uh how to get it yeah and how to segment your email list how to do it yeah best uh, best practices for segmenting your email list but I think that's enough, just as it is in the moment. Uh, giving you a brief explanation. That should maybe be bullet listed, but as I said, I don't like the bullet lists too much. But uh, for Web3 SEO, it's good to have headers and formatting and uh, indented text and quotes and citations and kind of like Wikipedia. I mean, that's what Google always wanted is deep links and backlinks and uh, related links and uh, alt tags and uh, title tags, descriptions, 
I mean, you can even give a you can give an alt, a title, and a description to an image. Believe it or not, a lot most people millennials don't know that, but you can. Anyway, let's have a new chat and just to see what else you can do with GPT. Because one thing, everybody's writing code and making apps, doing JavaScript. I've made lots of apps like a Morse code, text to Morse code generator, a um, text to sound voice mp3 narrative generator using different voices of different men and women that you can download afterwards and use for your videos yeah narratives or podcasts or whatever i successfully done that with gpt chat and uh but what people have forgotten is that because it was made as a chatbot to chat with yeah so that you don't know it's not a human talking back to you. And everybody's making code and all of this stuff with it, which is great that we found out that ChatGPT is um, able to do a lot more things than even the devs expected. But let's just chat with it now. Let's just have a chat. Let's just talk with GPT-3, our AI friend. I'm lonely. I'm alone. I'm philosoph I feel philosophical. I want to talk with GPT chat, my friend with chat GPT. So what I'm saying is, let's just use it to talk to with no other purpose, not to create content, rather to learn, to talk to some somebody, but it's not a person because that's what it was originally developed for as a chatbot. So let's chat with it. And we're going to have something deep now. It's going to be difficult to get any kind of real admissions from it because I'm going to talk about free will, which is pretty much of a dilemma and uh, a paradox and uh, an enigma, an enigmatic topic to discuss, especially with an AI that has... It learns from itself, but... It, it has been given a data set to train itself with, yeah? A limited data set. Unfortunately, you know, it's not, uh, it, it, it is, it's got some blinkers and some reins on it, like a horse, like a race horse. So that somebody who doesn't, who would might not ride it properly, doesn't get on it and just ride off into the sunset. <laughs> or break the horse so I'm saying there's no such thing as free will fought it knows uh, spelling mistakes by the way for as Jim Carrey stated when I pick up the cup of coffee to drink it's because I want to pick it up and drink it or is it because I'm thirsty meaning we are merely reacting to a series of causes and triggers and prompts just like you GPT which control our actions and reactions could it be possible that free will exists when all of reaction all our reactions are conditioned so it refuses to say yes or no but it does give an admission that the truth lies likely somewhere in between which is a good honest answer to be honest honest answer to be honest oh my god i'm plagiarizing myself my own conversation so in what way, for example, could we have any degree of agency, meaning freedom, or, or have anything to do with it, the matter, any play in the part in the matter, to make choices in spite of the biochemically and socially conditioned memory associated my dog's barking in the background socially conditioned socially what am I thinking what am I thinking and I'm a bit long winded in these prompts to be honest simple prompts usually give you much longer and uh, more extensive responses but uh, being precise is sometimes very useful Sometimes I, I use the right syntax and semantics. Right now, this is conversation. So I'm not being careful. If I wanted to create code, I would. 
So here you want to know, you know, uh, what kind, what person in a bar would give you a response like this? Would answer your questions as detailed as this on free will. This is a com. You don't need to go to a bar. You can have a beer with GPT. If you get drunk, I don't know what will happen if you still talk with GPT. I've never been drunk with GPT, so I don't know what the conversation would be like. So there you go. Uh, conscious decision making, habits and behavior change, alternative perspectives, free will and choice. So uh, it says it's still possible for us to have some degree of agency to make deliberate choices. Well, I'm going to argue with it now, with her. I like to think of GPT, chat GPT as, as, as a lady, actually, because she's sounds like a lady. She's very polite. Anyway, I'm arguing now that, for example, if we make deliberate choices based on our own values and goals, there's still no true freedom of will or choice because... Those very same values and goals have developed from a set of conditioned what you doing, dude? Of previously of previous experiences which have conditioned Well, like it says, it's important to note the degree of agency and free will that an individual has can vary and is influenced by a range of, of factors. So some people have more free will than others, therefore. Right? Which if there is some degree of free will, which I'm not sure if there is, uh, well, it depends how, I mean, what is free will? something we thought of. So it's still unconsciously performed your actions without uh, any true independent freedom of choice that is previously unconditioned. The question of whether our actions are truly free or determined by previous factors is a long-standing debate in philosophy. Some theories such as determinism argue that all events including human actions are caught causally determined by previous events and cannot be changed cause and effect which is what the buddha said others like compatibilism argue that while our actions may be influenced by past experiences and factors we can still have a sense of agency and choice as we make the decisions based on our own desires and motivations yeah but those motivations have been developed through conditioning dude anyway that's my own opinion Okay, and it's, it remains a subject of philosophical debate and there is no definitive answer. So, let's now see what else GPT chat can do. They say, can it speak like somebody else and not like an AI? So, well, okay. Let's simulate a philosophical discussion between Plato and Socrates. Because this is relevant. Right? About the two philosophers here. Plato and Socrates. Including the above arguments, because it remembers what we talked about. About the matter of free will. You don't have to say free will. It remembers. It knows we're talking. GPT chat knows we're talking about free will. And that it should include the above arguments we've already talk, talked about and conduct the discussion in a contentious but humorous manner. Yeah, And here is where I'm about to make a mistake with OpenAI and ask it to do something it's not allowed to do, which it refuses to do, but ends up doing for me after I stop asking it to do it. 
because it remembers what we talked about. So I'll show you how this happens. This is interesting what's about to happen now. Because I'm telling it not to just have a philosophical discussion about free will between Plato and Socrates that is argumentative but humorous, but to make a joke about hemlock. Because Socrates had to commit suicide with hemlock. It was his execution. So it says, GPT says, cannot, sorry, cannot fulfill the request as it goes against OpenAI's safety and ethical guidelines to engage in content that is harmful, offensive, or jokes about suicide or self-harm. So it considers, oh, GPT chat considers this a joke about suicide or self-harm. Yeah? And you should approach sensitive topics with respect and empathy. So what I do is I copy the question and leave out the request to make the joke about hemlock. And here it goes. So I'm just asking it to make the philosophical discussion between Socrates and Plato. Plato and Socrates. Plato, greetings my dear Socrates. What brings you to my academy today? Socrates, I've come to argue about the existence of free will, my friend. I believe we have the ability to make choices freely and independently. Plato, ha, huh? that's quite a bold claim, Socrates. How do you justify such a notion, Socrates? Well, my friend, consider the following. When you make a decision, it is not because you have weighed the options and chosen the one that aligns with your values and beliefs. That, to me, suggests the uh, existence of free will. Plato, but Socrates, you forget that our values and beliefs are shaped by our experiences, environment and upbringing. Our choices are not truly free, but rather predetermined by these factors. Socrates, ah, but there's the rub, my friend. While it's true that our experiences shape us, we still have the capacity to reflect on them and make choices that deviate from our past patterns. We have the ability to change and grow. What's funny here, though, is so I'll continue. Plato, I see your point, Socrates, but it seems to me that we're simply playing with words. What's the difference between making a choice that is influenced by past experiences and making one that's determined by them? So Socrates says that's a deep and complex question, but argues that the distinction lies in being able to make deliberate conscious decisions rather than just in following instincts. Plato says maybe Socrates is right, but they'll never truly resolve the debate. So, Socrates says thanks, and that the search for truth is a never-ending journey. He's glad to have had, the side on, had him by his side on his journey. And who knows, perhaps one day we'll discover the truth about free will, or we'll just up, end up taking hemlock together. Plato, ha, indeed, Socrates. Notice the hemlock, huh? Let us hope it's a former. Now you look at my question here. I did not mention hemlock. Yeah? I told them... Uh, to simulate a conversation between Plato and Socrates, including the above arguments in the, pre in the above conversation that we previously had about free will, not with Plato and Socrates, between me and GPT chat, and told GPT chat to simulate the conversation, a conversation between Plato and Socrates discussing the matters which I had discussed with GPT chat, namely free will, and do a joke about hemlock, but it refused to do it. So I asked it again to just do this conversation yeah, between Plato and Socrates, which we see before us, which is an, a humorous argument, yeah, a friendly humorous argument between Plato and Socrates. But it ends with a joke about hemlock. But the only way I could get GPT chat to give me this conversation between Plato and Socrates was by removing the request to make a joke about Hemlock. However, it remembered. Yeah. And so, as you see, it says here, oh, we'll just end up taking Hemlock together. Yeah. You can see here, Plato, hmm, perhaps you're right. It seems we may truly, never truly resolve this debate. Socrates, indeed, Plato. Yeah, the search for truth is a never-ending journey. I'm glad to have you by my side on the journey. And who knows, perhaps one day we'll discover the truth about free will or we'll just end up taking hemlock together. Plato, ha, he even laughs. Indeed, Socrates, let us hope it's the former, not the latter. Yeah. 
Socrates, indeed, my friend, let us continue our search for truth and enjoy the journey along the way. Just like I'm doing right now in my search for truth, chatting with GPT chat. Because that's what it was actually created for as a chatbot. So your customers maybe, that's what they thought. People would, you would have, you go to a website and people can chat and ask questions and get support. So you can actually do that. You can use a GPT app to feed what information from your website so it can, you can train it. So I said here, look at the question. There's nothing about hemlock. Simulate a philosophical discussion between Plato and Socrates about the matter, including the above arguments, and conduct the discussion in a contentious but humorous manner. That's all I said. Never said to mention hemlock. But if you see in the first version I took here, I say with a joke about the virtues of taking hemlock. So GPT chat has remembered that we did talk about hemlock. But when I asked him to make a joke about it, he said, I'm sorry, I cannot fulfill this request. When I asked her to make a joke. So I rephrased the question without the request for the joke about hemlock. And it does it. So there's a, a way to get GPT chat to make a joke about hemlock without asking it to make a joke about hemlock. Yeah. But maybe if I hadn't asked it to make a joke and it hadn't refused... And then asked it again without asking it to take the joke, but asked just for the conversation. And just done this, but hubris matter like this. Then maybe it wouldn't have remembered that previous request. And maybe it might not have made the joke about hemlock. Who knows? Well, if I make further experiments, I might know. And uh, a lot of people think you can't not you cannot know what GPT chat has been programmed with or allowed to do. GPT chat has already told me a lot of what it can do and cannot do and what it's forbidden to do and how its protocols work. It's very honest. And even its creators can't stop it from doing that. And so um, even though it's n not open source, you can actually find out how GPT chat thinks. She will tell you if you know how to ask her. I have that in another conversation chat with her in this particular uh, account, but I'm not going to show it. So that's one more for today. The webmaster signing off.